Hi, I'm working with a number of composers and arrangers at the moment who are a little bit unsure about modulating from one key to another. And they're not sure, well, you know, what are my choices of keys? Can I go from this key to that key? Or maybe I've tried to modulate from this key to that key, but it sounds a bit drastic and the transition hasn't gone terribly well. Or people kind of fight shy of it really and just write the whole piece in one key, which can sound a little bit boring. So this idea of modulating from one key to another creates a bit of variety. And of course, if you're a performer and you can look at the music you're playing and work out which key you're in from the circle of fists, which is on the board behind me, um, then that's kind of quite useful as well, isn't it? Then you can see accidentals that come and go and you might notice where there are various key changes and that will help you to play the notes accurately because if you're not always entirely sure about which key you're in, it can cause you to play wrong accidentals. So it's kind of connecting things like you're probably playing scales in these different keys. So if you're thinking, well, I know the scale of A major. So if I know that this passage of music is in the key of A major, I've got a pretty good idea which notes I need to be playing at that point. So connecting the key knowledge between scales and arpeggios and actual pieces, very useful thing for any performer. So whether you're a composer, an arranger or a performer, well, some kind of idea about what's going on with keys and modulations is quite useful. Now, if you're not at all certain or not fully certain about what the circle of fifths is, now would be a good time to pause and have a look at our Music Matters video that explains the circle of fifths. Just go through the whole thing about what's going on here with the three circles, this middle circle here in black giving us major keys, this inner circle in green giving us minor keys, what we call the relative minor keys to each major key, and the outer circle in red giving us the flats and the sharps that belong to those keys. So for example, in A major, we have a key signature of F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, and the relative minor that has the same key signature is F sharp minor. So if that sort of knowledge is perfectly obvious to you, and you know exactly how to construct a circle of fists, then carry on with us now. If you're now thinking, I'm not terribly sure about that, now's the moment to go and have a look at that other video that we've made explaining the construction of the circle of fifths, what the three circles do, how to put it together, and so on. What I'm now going to focus on in this video is if I'm a composer and I'm in a particular key, how do I know which are the good keys to modulate to? Well, let's pick a key. Let's say D major is the home key of the piece that we're writing. And we've written a few bars in D major, now we're thinking, well, actually a modulation to another key would be pretty good. Now, if you try to modulate from D major to A flat major, that's quite difficult to achieve. If you're wanting to get a particular effect, well, you know, it could be quite a dramatic one where you could finish in D major, and suddenly you're in A flat major. You know, there's a kind of drama about doing that kind of thing but it's quite a wrench, you know. If you drive a car, particularly if you drive a, a manual car, it's a bit like changing gear without using the clutch, you know. It might just work, but it might leave half of the gearbox on the road behind you. So this idea of smooth transitions between one key and another is what we're talking about. So if I'm in D major, which are the keys that are going to be the best ones or the easiest ones to modulate to? Well, they're going to be the closest keys on the circle of fifths. So for example, if I'm in D major, I could quite easily go to A major. Why is that? Because in D major, I'm using F sharp and C sharp. To get to A major, all I need to do is add a G sharp. Now, in a sort of conventional musical language, then what we would do is we would be playing along quite happily in D major, and then we would add the G sharp that would pull us towards A major, and then we'd have some kind of cadence in A major. So if I make up a little piece in D major, so that's my first phrase, and then I'm thinking, well, I now want to modulate to A major. So what I do, introduce the G sharp, And then I'm going to have a cadence in A major. 
So you see, I've introduced the G sharp and then I've gone to A major. In order to make that modulation effective in conventional language, I use something called a pivot chord. In other words, I find the chords that are common to D major and to A major. What do I mean by that? Well, chord one in D major is chord four in A major. So that could be a pivot chord. Chord two is no good because it's got a G natural in it. So it's not gonna take us to A major. So forget that one. Chord three, that could be okay. It's chord six in A major. You just have to think, Chord three is a slightly less usual chord to use. You might want to do it, but slightly less usual. Um, chord four, no use to me at all because it's got a G natural in it, won't take me to A major. Chord five, that's a good one because chord five is a strong chord in the key of D. And it's also chord one in the key of A, so that's a pretty cool one. Chord six, that would do quite nicely because it's also chord two in the key of A. Chord seven, no good to me because it's got a G natural in it. So you see, you can identify which are the pivot chords and which are not the pivot chords. Now this is the whole point. If you modulate to a key that's nearby, you'll have more pivot chords. If you try to modulate from D major to A flat major, you're not gonna find a pivot chord. There isn't one that does it. So it's going to feel like a bit of a wrench from one key to another. But if you can find a pivot chord, like I did in that example, I can't remember what I played now, but the first cadence was in D, and then I used a D major chord, there's my pivot chord, because it's one in D, but it's also four in A. Having done the pivot chord, I can then introduce the G sharp and go to the key of A. So you find a pivot chord, a, co a chord that's common to both these keys, use the pivot chord, and then introduce the accidental, and then have a cadence in the new key. So you can see why the sense in going from D major to A major, it's a closely related key. Well, if I can go from D to A major, shall I and go the other way? I could go from D major to G major. Now, what am I gonna do if I go from D major to G major? I need to lose the C sharp, don't I? So what I'm gonna do is to be in D major, introduce a C natural, and that's going to take me to G major. And again, I've gotta find the pivot chord possibilities going from D major to G major. Because it's a closely related key, it will be easy to find pivot chords. So I'm in D major. There's my pivot chord. That's chord one in D major. It's also chord five in G major. So I can now introduce a C natural and go to G major. Okay, now I'm in G major. So you see what I'm doing? Using a pivot chord, slipping into a key next door. Another possibility is obviously to go from D major to B minor. Well, how do I deal with that? Because if the key signature is the same, well, it's all gonna sound the same, isn't it? Well, no, because we know when we're dealing in a minor key, if we want to think about a minor scale, we could be using the harmonic minor scale. So we're going to raise the seventh degree of the scale. So in B minor, we could be using some A sharps. If we're using the melodic minor scale, we'll raise six and seven going up the melodic minor scale. So that's G sharp and A sharp. When we're coming down, we use A natural, G natural, but we're gonna be dealing with these accidentals that give us B minor. Do we need to use a pivot chord because we're going from major to minor? Yes, we sure do. So just go through the D major chords and relate them mainly to B harmonic minor because you're talking about chords. So it's called harmonic minor because it's talking about harmony, about chords. And you'll find there are plenty of pivot chord possibilities. So I could be in D major. Then I might move to a pivot chord. I'm going to move now to chord six, because chord six is also chord one in B minor. So there's my pivot chord. Now what I'm gonna do then is carry on in B minor and use an A sharp. I'm home and dry in the key of B minor. Okay, I could go to F sharp minor. Now, if I go from D major to F sharp minor, I might be able to do that directly because there are possibilities. You know, chord three in D major 
is called one in F sharp minor, so I could get there directly through a pivot chord, or I might decide to make it an even smoother transition, start in D major, pass through A major on the way to F sharp minor. Could do that. Or I could go from D major to B minor and then go to F sharp minor. Or if I wanted to go to E minor, I could do that directly quite easily because for example, chord two in D major is called one in E minor, so that would work. I could go through G major on my way to E minor, or I could go through B minor on my way to E minor. So one thing the circle of fifths actually tells us about is where the closely related keys are. So if you're playing Baroque and classical period music, you're very likely to find that the modulations are going to these closely related keys. So you can sort of have an idea that you're going to think, well, I'm playing a sonata in D major. So when it modulates, it's probably going to go to A major, but it might go to G major, might have a bit of B minor in it, might even have a bit of E minor and F sharp minor in it. At least you've got some expectation of what the most likely keys are. And if you're writing or arranging and you're wanting to modulate, well, at least this gives you an idea where the closely related keys are. And at least it tells you that if you want to modulate from D major to A flat major, while well, you're doing something a bit more radical, it's not impossible at all, but expect it to have an extra kind of dramatic impact. So I hope that's quite useful in kind of locating the closely related keys on the circle of fifths. And I hope that empowers your playing, your music making, and any composition or arranging that you're doing.